I'd spent my, my life following art all over the world and just looking for something that I hadn't seen yet, just to try to add that to whatever I'd seen and, and understood a little bit. I had been collecting art starting in my early 20s, looking at art, not really collecting. I didn't do that till a little later when I realized this thing's here that I need to have and keep and start putting together and write about it. And because I came from a part of the country, this one, which hadn't had access to this kind of information, I didn't have it. And it wasn't until basically, I guess, when I met Lonnie Holly, uh, which was in 1986, I think. And, uh, and here was a man that truly was a great genius in everything that he did, but nobody cared a thing about him. I mean, he was being tormented. And I thought, I need to help this guy, and I need to find out what he's about. Lonnie and I started traveling around. We'd get, get in a car and go to Mississippi and Tennessee and the Carolinas, asking questions and finding artists. And I came to realize that right here in the South, they made art that was as good as anybody had ever made. Abstraction and conceptual art has existed in the art of Southern black artists like Joe Mentor going back hundreds of years, long before any white artist made something and said, look, I've made a conceptual piece here. This work needs to be shown in Alabama, which is something we'd wanted to do for a long time. It needed to be seen here. The exhibit in Mobile will consist of about 10 artists from Alabama, black artists who are male artists, and then a number of female artists, principally quilt makers from G's Benz, divided into categories according to the subject matter that we find in this work. It kind of fell into place that there were five or six subjects that were repeatedly used. So we're doing that in Mobile, the first subject is, has to do with slavery. The second category has to do with agricultural Alabama as it morphed into industrial Alabama. The third section is the African-American woman, viewpoints of about women and by women, self-evaluation of women. The fourth category in that show will be called commemoration and autobiography. And then the fifth and final one is coping with the modern world. And the Montgomery show will be civil rights. People assume, well, civil rights came and black people are free and equal and everything's fine. And Joe and everybody else who's black will tell you, well, not quite. And that's what the, the last category deals with, the not quite part. It's not, it's not a downer, it's not pessimistic or negative, it's just reality. This is an important show. And the visitor should be able to learn a couple of things that will be very surprising. They do some of the most sophisticated art, some of the most intellectual art, some of the most sensitive art that anybody's ever seen. The problem's just been to get people to look at it. What's so interesting is people in the South will go to Europe or they'll go elsewhere, they'll go to New York or wherever. They go to see great art and they've got it right here under their noses and it's been here all along. What drew me to this work was that I had lived a perfect storm of a life looking for art all over the world. So I'd seen it. I'd, I'd been to almost everywhere and, and explored the ancient ruins and the modern settings of of art when I thought that's where I belonged. And uh, so I'm back in Georgia and I'd saved up enough money to, yeah. to go away for a few years and get started elsewhere. And I had the money, so I'm sitting there and recovering fine and ready to get out and you know beat the bushes. And I thought, you know, I've never gotten a chance to explore the South for what I knew would be here. I'd told people, mm -hmm. there's something out there, we just don't know what it is. It had to be, I mean, culturally, it had to be. I'm connected to the work as art, as an individual, as a human being. You can't compare Italian Renaissance art with classical Greek art, with black art in the South, except to say this is three high points of world civilization. On a scale of one to 10, it's all 10. And there's not very much that is a 10. I mean, this is right up there with the best. It has to do with great art. I mean, if you look mm -hmm. at the great art of any civilization, it's, it stands for what the civilization stands for. I'm not gonna start throwing theology out there at it because it doesn't need it. I mean, it's a diary of a culture. Did you go to Birmingham because you knew they had great artists over there? No, I went there because I knew there ought to be great artists <laughs> over there. And we did find it. And, and they weren't all making products. They weren't just making paintings to hang on the wall, sell to tourists. In fact, none of them were. The kind of art I collected never was made for sale. 
Lonnie Holly, he'd sold a few little things here and there, but nobody paid much for him. Thornton Dial, who's going to go down in history as one of the great artists of, in, the, in the universe, uh, had sold nothing. These are very intelligent artists, and, and their work shows it. You know, there are a lot of people that say they can measure intelligent quotients of artists. They can say Michelangelo had an IQ of 178 and Leonardo 190. I mean, I've heard stuff like that. I don't know if it's true. Probably is. Well, these artists are as smart as any of them. And the art shows it, too. How does it speak to me? It screams in my face. And it says, this is as good as anything I've ever seen. And that's what it did when I first started seeing it. And I'm thinking, oh my God, this stuff's so far ahead of the learning curve. These artists are so far ahead of the ones shown in big galleries in New York that are selling for millions. And these artists are advanced to that. But that's not surprising. I mean, people, oh, well, that can't be. Well, if you just stop and think and look at it, you see that it not only can be, but it is. When I first saw this, it just screamed at me. It just said, look at this, look at us, we're great. I mean, I, I just couldn't help it and I followed it and I went everywhere there was to look. I asked around, it was everywhere. It wasn't just in Birmingham, it wasn't just in Alabama. It was all over. I found geniuses in Mississippi and Tennessee and Georgia and Florida, they were there. And if I could have looked and if I'd have had a bigger team, we'd have found twice as many. But I couldn't be in New York or California or Chicago to do this because the art wasn't there. It was here in the South. It's a Southern thing.